press the button. And away we go. Ahoy! Dapper Dan Pomade presents America's best known investigator, Nikki Sketch! Just a minute, just a moment. Mr. What's All This? This is Nikki Sketch! Nikki Sketch? America's favorite investigator? Right you are, Douglas. Presented by Dapper Dan Pomade. Wow! Nikki Sketch! Don't forget, it's with Dapper Dan, too. That sounds exciting! It is, Mr. Douglas, it is. Well, then, let's get on with it! Splendid! Tonight's story, Nikki and the Case Under the Big Top. Our story begins in the office of Byron the Magnificent, manager of the Triple Circle Circus. You stole my ring, Master Jerry. You're a liar! Shut up! Shut up, both of you! Now, what seems to be the trouble? He says I stole his ringmaster jacket. She did. I just had it made, too. It was in my dressing room. Why don't you just take care of your things? Okay, okay, stop. Stop! Now, one at a time. You, Horton, what is it? Mr. Byron, my new ringmaster jacket. The one I use in my act of Topsy the Elephant. It's been stolen. Why do you accuse me? There's hundreds of people around this circus. I don't need your old ringmaster jacket. Of course you don't need it. You did it in jealousy. <laughs> jealousy of what? Jealousy of the fact that Topsy is the final act now. You and your bears play second fiddle. Rightfully so. <laughs> Why, you dirty little... Ow! How dare you hit me with your blasted whip! Horton, Horton, now listen to me. But she hit me! Hit me with her whip! You had it coming, accusing me of stealing your ringmaster jacket. <sighs> You'd better leave, Bernadette. Let me talk to Horton. Go on. Sure. Pamper him. He's your star. I don't mean anything around this big top anymore. Everything is all about Horton. Horton and his dancing elephant. Now that simply isn't true, Bernadette. <laughs> You're on a higher pay bracket than Horton. Money. Money. What does that mean? It's billing that counts. Why is he in the star spot? I used to be there. Because you're a has-been. You and your old bears. How would you like another cut with my whip? Just try it. Get out, Bernadette. Go on. It's only 20 minutes to showtime. Get out. And get ready for your act. Sure. I'll go. But you haven't heard the last of this, Horton. Not by a long shot. Oh. Hello, Bernadette. Shut up. What's up with her? <sighs> She's upset about something, Dimitri. As per usual. Figures. Oh. Horton. Here's your ringmaster jacket. My ringmaster jacket? Where did you find it, Dimitri? In the dressing tent. But I've looked all over for it. It's been gone since last night. Well, you've got it now. So forget about the jacket. Just just get ready. Sounds good, Byron. See you after the performance. What's the matter, Dimitri? Horton say no? He still laughs at me because I am a clown. Clowns have feelings behind their painted face. I was certain that... By now, Horton would let me be training with the elephants. I've been cleaning up after them for three years now. Clowns are funny. But clowns also settle scores. Come, Miss Clyde, my dear girl. Come on, Nikki. We're late. The performance has already begun. Oh, we certainly are. 
And it's all your fault, Nikki. Sorry, Miss Clyde, but you know how demanding and unpredictable my field of expertise is. We should have gone to the circus without Nikki. Oh, Douglas, you don't mean that. Well, we're never going to see the show if we don't get a move on. Fair enough. Carry on. The big top is just ahead. You were here last night, weren't you, Miss Clyde? Oh, yes, and I loved it. Dimitri the Clown, Bernadette and her trained bears, and my personal favorite, Horton and his dancing elephant. Jeez, if you were here last night, why do you want to see it again tonight? You haven't figured it out yet, Douglas? Miss Clyde has become a candid camera fiend. She takes every opportunity she can to take pictures of everything, all the time. Oh, so that's what all that paraphernalia is. Yeah. Douglas, when I was here last night, I realized what wonderful possibilities the circus offered for pets. When I was invited to the circus, I certainly wasn't expecting to be your caddy. What you needed was a small truck to carry your equipment. The least you could have done would have been to pay my admission. Oh, is it heavy, Nikki? Still time to see Horton and Topsy the Dancing Elephant right this way. Now I've got the tickets. Come on. Here you are. Best available seating on the left. And now, and now Bernadette's <laughs> bears even know how to me. jump rope. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. What's the matter, Douglas? Catching cold? It's, it's the act. The bears. I can't stand bears. I'm allergic to them. They make me sneeze. Even just looking at them. You can open your eyes now, Douglas. The bears are going off. Got it. A beautiful shot. How many pictures have you taken already, Miss Clyde? Um, how can this one be so clean? But I'm saving one whole roll of film for Topsy and Horton. They're so cool! Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen the, star the star attraction, attraction of the, of the Triple, Triple Circle, Circle Circus, circus renowned, renowned throughout, throughout the world, world. The greatest, the greatest, most thrilling attraction, attraction of all time, time Horton, 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 Horton and his, and his dancing, dancing elephant, elephant Top, Top C. C! Watch this, Nikki. Douglas, Horton comes out into the ring over there, and the elephant comes out on this side. Oh, do they now? Then, the elephant curtsies. Oh, and the side. He does, you see. You'll see. And then Horton and the elephant go into a waltz. <laughs> Probably does it better than I do. My wife Jules always says... Got it! I got a picture of the curtsy, Nikki! Well, since you're taking pictures, that wolf of Topsy's isn't too bad either. He's backing away from him. Part of the act, Nikki. The elephant pretends he doesn't want to dance. No. No, that isn't the way it went last night. <laughs> Something's wrong, guys. Oh, no. Look! Topsy's being hurt by his jacket! Miss Clyde! He's killed him! Topsy's still stomping on him! The next morning at Mickey Sketch's office. I don't see why we had to come down here to your office this morning, Miss Sketch. What happened to Horton last night was an accident. That's what the police would like to determine, miss. Miss Sketch, Bernadette's right. I've been with the circus for 40 years. I've seen plenty of accidents like last night's. It's part of the job, Miss Sketch. The risk, I mean. When you work with animals, well, you never know. You mean to say to me, dear woman, that those bears of yours haven't been trained? That they're, they're wild? They've been trained, Mr. Douglas. But they're still wild. Give them a chance and... Pardon me, I didn't bring you people down here to discuss animal training. A man was killed last night. Why don't you book Horton's elephant for murder? Miss, I'm doing my best not to lose my temper with you. You've done nothing since you came in but give curt responses to my questions. You must forgive her, Miss Sketch. She's upset. Everyone connected with the show is. What more do you want to know? Let's put it this way, Mr. Byron. 
It's possible to direct an animal to kill, isn't it? Why, yes, but... Nobody could handle that elephant but Horton. I see. So everyone loved Horton, including the elephant, and yet he's dead. No one said everyone loved him. You weren't his biggest fan. No. It was a small disagreement, Miss Sketch. Matter of billing. Nothing serious. I didn't do it. Don't look at me. Ask Dimitri. Or some of the others. Dimitri the Clown? I asked him to come here this morning, too. Where is he? He said he was coming. What, did Dimitri hate Horton for any reason? Not hate. I don't think. Resented, sure. Dimitri wanted to learn to train Topsy. Essentially, he wanted Horton's job. Bernadette! It's true. I heard it. Maybe he had something to do with it. Yes, I definitely want to talk to him. Well, if you've got nothing more to ask me, I'm going. Are you coming, Byron? If Miss Sketch is through with us... I guess that's all for now, Mr. Magnificent. I'll drop in on you after the performance this evening, just to take a look around. Certainly, Miss Sketch. Anytime. Oh, Miss Clyde. Nikki, I finally got all the pics uploaded that I took last night at the circus. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had visitors. Quite all right, miss. We were just leaving. Come on, Bernadette. Bye, Mr. Douglas. Goodbye, Byron. Uh, mind if I walk to your car with you, Mr. Byron? I'd like to ask you a few things about Dimitri the Clown. It's a free country. I'll be back in a moment, Miss Clyde. It's mystifying. Certainly mystifying. You mean about Horton's death, Douglas? Yes. Now imagine, little clown named Dimitri falls in love with Horton. Horton rejects his affections, and then Dimitri, in wrath, turns his own elephant against him. Persuaded the mammoth to kill his own master. Hmm. Killed with an elephant? Uh, there must have been an easier way. Oh, Douglas, I don't believe it happened that way. Well, Sketch does. Well, at least, I mean, she seems very much interested in that theory. Pardon me. I'm looking for Miss Sketch. This is her office. She'll be back shortly. Won't you come in and wait? Thank you. She said she wanted to speak to me. Are you with the, the Big Top, sir? Yes, I'm Dimitri. Dimitri? The clown? Wow! You know, I would never know you on the street. I mean, that makeup of yours is, is terrifying. Uh, I've always been you know, petrified of clowns. Oh, I've got some pictures of you here. Would you like to... Oh. Oh, I just remembered. What? About the accident. Last night, I've got those here, too. I don't suppose you want to be reminded of what happened. You have actual photograph of the elephant and Horton? Yes. I would like to see them. I w would like to see them very much. Well, here they are. There. Amazing. Truly amazing. All those tiny photographs. My dear Miss Clyde, you've caught every moment of that horrible tragedy. Oh, why are they all, like, thumbnails, though? Yes, miss. They are amazing. And they tell me a very interesting Do they, Dimitri? They tell me that Horton was murdered. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the intermission. And what a stunning development that terrifying clown Dimitri shared with us. Frankly, it's it's truly sad. I mean, this business with Topsy the Elephant, that's truly sad. I know something that could cheer everyone up, Mr. Douglas. You do? Yes, something that could make even a scary clown silly. Really? Well, share it, man! The same old bop getting you down, hair getting heavy, 
not holding firm like it should. Get Dapper Dan pomade! Dapper Dan pomade? What's that? Why haven't you heard, Mr. Douglas? Dapper Dan pomade is the right brand to keep your hair in the best shape of your life. Try some! Golly! Dapper Dan sure does hold it up, just the way I like it. It sure does. Well, we gotta get back to the story. I'm excited to see what happens next to Nikki Sketch and the Big Top Bears. You say nobody has seen Dimitri, Mr. Byron? No, Miss Sketch. He didn't show up for the evening performance either. Show just ended five minutes ago. I see. Well, hold on to him when and if he does come back. I will, Miss Sketch. I'll let you know. I'll call. It's very important. I am well aware. Well, goodbye then. Goodbye. Dimitri the Clown is still missing, eh? Yes. Sketch, do you think he may have, well, met with foul play? Why do you say that, Miss Clyde? He knew that Horton had been murdered. But how? How did he know? By looking at those pics that Miss Clyde took of the tragedy, Nikki. We told you that. I've looked at those photographs from every possible angle, Douglas. You've looked at them. Miss Clyde has looked at them. Have you been able to see anything that would indicate murder? No. But he said it was murder. And he said it very decisively, Nikki. This is the most confusing case I've had yet. But I have a hunch, just a hunch, that a murder has indeed been committed. Dimitri justifies that hunch. And then just disappears. Here, it's eleven o'clock already and he hasn't returned. Why didn't you two hold him here till I got back? We told him that you'd want to know what he said. But he wouldn't stay, Nikki. He said he had a bone to pick. His very words, Nikki. That's a big help to me. About these pictures, Nikki. Yes? Do you think it might help if they were larger? It might. We'd be able to see them more clearly. These little thumbnails are too small. We'll come along, young lady, and help. You can come along, Douglas. But Nikki won't leave here until she's shaken the candy bar out of the machine again. You'd think she'd have figured out not to use that thing by now. Wait for Mr. Byron's call. Oh, that's right. I nearly forgot. I guess I'll stick around too, then. Well, see you both later. Oh, yes, Miss Clyde. See you later. What's the matter, old sleuth? You don't seem your usual chillax self tonight. Douglas, this case has got me completely baffled. At the big top, Bernadette and Dimitri. Now, now, cub. Mama can't let you out of your cage. Go to sleep. That's a good cub. Come on now. There. Bernadette. Bernadette. Dimitri, where have you been? You've missed two shows. Byron is a rate. Mind if I come into your dressing tent, Bernadette? I guess not. Come in. I had something to talk to you about. Have you seen Byron? Or Nikki Sketch? No. I didn't want to see them. That's why I stayed away from the show this afternoon and tonight. I wanted to see you first. Alone. What about? Have you seen the photographs? What photographs? Taken last night by Sketch's friend, Miss Clyde. She's got it all in pictures. How Horton was killed. So what? I saw how he was killed. His elephant trampled him. No, Bernard. Topsy didn't trample him. She trampled his ringmaster Jack. The pictures show it very plain. Yeah? Well, what do you want me to do? You killed him, Bernadette. No. No! You killed him? You're as guilty as if you had placed gun against forehead and pulled trigger. You're crazy. Am I? You 
were jealous of him. Jealous because he outshone you. Because he was a bigger star than you were. I didn't kill him. The photographs will tell the story, Bernadette. The photographs and I will say one thing and they'll convict you. You can't prove it. Anything you say, they won't believe you. You hated him too. You could have done it. No, no. I loved him. I loved him. He mocked you, ignored you. You were nothing to him. I loved him, and you killed him. What are you going to do? I'm going to tell them. Wait, look, Dimitri, I've got money. I've saved it. You can have it. You killed him. Take the money and keep your mouth shut. No, Bernadette. I'm going to tell them. Tell them about the junk. Dimitri, come back. Listen. He's gone. There's only one thing to do. Only one way to stop him. Come out, Cub. Go get him. Get him for me. Go. Cub will stop him. Stop him forever. Back at Nikki Sketch's office. I came as soon as I got your call, Mr. Byron. Did Dimitri have a chance to speak before he died? No, Miss Sketch. Before my men could get to him, get that bear off of him, he was already through. That quiet little man. Oh no, who would have thunk he was a murderer? How do you arrive at that conclusion, Douglas? Well, old sleuth, he saw the photographs, didn't he? Yes. He realized that he was discovered, so... You think he killed himself? Of course. Now think of it, Nikki. He killed Horton with an elephant, killed himself with a bear. It's incredible. Just incredible. Exactly. You mean my theory is right, Gumshoe? No, I mean it's incredible. Literally. Dimitri knew nothing about controlling animals, Miss Sketch. He couldn't have been guilty of Horton's death. And yet he knew enough to see in the photographs that Horton had been murdered. Byron, where's Bernadette? I don't know, Miss Sketch. No one's seen her since after her performance tonight. And the bear? Byron, where is it? Strange thing about that bear. We had a bad time of it for a few minutes. But once we got it into Bernadette's tent, the animal went right back into its cage and went to sleep. She keeps it in her tent? Oh, no! Oh, it's her favorite. She calls it Cub. I wonder what Dimitri saw in the photographs that we didn't see. Now we'll never know. Perhaps I could see it too, Miss Sketch. Maybe it's something that only a circus man would recognize. I thought of that, Mr. Byron. After I got the call from you telling me about Dimitri's death, I called Miss Clyde and told her to meet us here with the photographs. She's enlarged them. Good. I suppose you realize that all this terrible business is going to be bad for my show, Miss Sketch. Of course, sir. But two people have died. We aren't just going to sweep that under the rug. Listen, we big top folks expect the worst. Always, Mr. Douglas. In the big top, a bad box office is more of a tragedy than a death. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean, my dear man. Bad box office. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Byron... I wonder if I could have a look at the costume that Horton was wearing when he was killed. Certainly, Miss Sketch. I've got it right here. I've been thinking of sending it to his folks. There. You can see it's in bad shape. Yes. Autopsy showed he died of a broken neck when the elephant picked him up by the ringmaster jacket and tossed him. Hmm. This ringmaster jacket is pretty badly... Ripped and torn. Nikki, oh, oh no. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it away. <coughs> what is it, Douglas? It's Ringmaster Jacket, Nikki. 
it affects me the way the bears do. It makes me... I'm trying to sneeze! <coughs> Golly! Bears? Mr. Byron, how do the elephants and the bears get along? They hate each other. Why? If an elephant smelled the scent of a bear... He'd kick up an awful fuss. You mean that ringmaster jacket? Horton's ringmaster jacket? Yes. That ringmaster jacket has the scent of a bear on it. Geez, Sketch. Icky. Well, I see what you mean. That's why I've been sneezing just now. Yes, and that's why the elephant went berserk last night. Come on, Byron. We've got to find Bernadette. At the big top, we find Bernadette! Miss Cloud. Oh? Oh, you frightened me for a minute. I can't see you very well. It's, it's so dark. I met you yesterday for a moment. I'm Bernadette. The bear lady? That's right. Uh, I saw you stop your car in the parking lot. I had to see you. It's about those pictures you took. Uh, of the accident to Horton. Oh, did Sketch send you to look for me? Sorry I'm so late. I was making enlargements. I know how anxious she is for Mr. Byron to look at the pictures. Byron. Yes, I see. Well, I'd better take them over to him. That's Mr. Byron's office wagon over there, isn't it? Sketch wants Byron to look at them, huh? Yes, he thinks that perhaps a circus performer will be able to see what poor Dimitri saw in them. Well, I've got to get them over to them. Wait. Yes? They're not in the office wagon. They're not? No. They're waiting for you in my tent. It's right this way. Come on. Oh, um, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, those pictures. You've got all of them with you? Why, yes. Negatives, too? <laughs> yes. You know, I was in such a rush to get over here, after I finished enlarging the prints, that I just jammed everything into the envelope and dashed out of my apartment. Negatives, too, huh? Hmm? Why are you so interested in the negatives, miss? Interested? I'm not. Sketch said she wanted them, too. That's all. Wonder why she wanted the negatives. Oh, here's my tent. After you, ma'am. Thank you. Why, it's dark in here. They're not here. They'll be back in a minute. Here. I'll switch the dressing table lights on for you. There we are. <gasps> What's that? That's Cub. My pet bear. He's the star of my act. I keep his cage here in my dressing tent. He's not the one who... who... Cub? No. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Now would you, Cub? See? Hmm. Do you suppose we ought to go look for them? Mr. Byron and Nicky? They said they'd be back. May I look at the pictures? Uh, why, yes, here. There they are. Yes. Yes, it's, it's quite plain. So Dimitri was right. Then you see it too? What is it? What are you doing? I'm destroying these pictures, Miss Clyde. Burning the evidence. You? Then you killed Horton! And Dimitri! Yes. I took his ringmaster jacket. I wrapped it around Cub here all night. It had the scent of my bear all over it. Then, when Horton's elephant smelled it, she went wild and trampled the jacket. I killed Dimitri because he knew. Why, you murderer! You horrible woman! Get out of my way! You're not leaving here, Miss Clyde. You're not leaving here alive. What? Get her, Cub. Get her for me! No. No! <coughs> Miss Clyde! Miss Clyde! Nikki! Stand what? back, Miss Clyde! <coughs> Miss Clyde. Miss Clyde, are you alright? Yes, Nikki. I'm alright. Thanks to you. You were wonderful. 
just wonderful. Your shooting skills haven't improved, but at least one of those bullets landed. I heard you scream, and the bear growl. I knew you were in danger. Nikki! Nikki! What happened? Oh no. Is the bear dead? Dead as a carpet. Nikki shot him. It's Bernadette, Nikki. She killed Horden. She murdered Dimitri, too. Bernadette? Oh my god. Mr. Byron and I saw her running out of this tent a moment ago. Come on, we've got to get her. Miss Sketch. Which way did she go? Over there. In the big animal tent. Why? She's the murderer. What was that? Sounded like Horton's elephant. Bernadette's in there. Come on. Pull the tent flap back. Oh, look. Oh my god. How horrible. Check her pulse. No pulse. Topsy must have smelled the bears on her and freaked out and trampled her too. What a horrible tragedy. I agree. Perhaps she might think of it that way, but uh, I prefer to call it retribution. Douglas is right, Mr. Byron. Bernadette has paid for her sins. You just listened to Mercury Theatre Podcast. I'm John Badger. For the characters in this episode, we had... As the announcer, I'm Landed Lawrence. As Byron the Magnificent, I'm Van. As Douglas, I'm Jeremy Shields. As Dimitri the Clown, I'm John Mark Most. As Bernadette, I am Kitten B. Trippin. As Miss Clyde, I'm Georgina Walkington. And as Horton, Chad Bell. I'd also like to give a special thanks to those who made this podcast possible. For the original theme music, Joe Weatherford for composition, and Leo for the accordion intro. A special appreciation goes to Sam Brown for being my editorial knight in shining armor. To get more information on this episode's talent, visit our website. To keep up with us on our journey, join the Mercurius on the Mercury Theater Podcast group on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at John S. Badger, or visit the website at mercurytheaterpodcast.com. For as little as three bucks a month, you can support this podcast on Patreon. See show notes or website for additional information. Hmm. Damper Dan's hair cream, or whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> Damper Dan's pomade. pomade. Come on. Oh, pomade. What is pomade? This is a nice job with uh, like the animal sound effects and like the circus music and everything, blending it all together. Sounds good. Thanks. It only took about a hundred hours. And then the sounds when you're like handing over the papers and you hear like the rustling of the paper and everything. That's so cool. Yeah, the sound effects are really cool actually. I love the gravel ones. <laughs> I know that's really specific, but I just love the gravelly ones. <laughs> and John is gonna kill me over this. <laughs> um he's, he's driving he's he's leaving his house to drive here to my house and murder me, I know. Um, he's already but- He's already in the uh, car. Uh, He's just left yes. the recording. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is a pre-recorded recording. Miss Clyde, I love all the voices, but uh, uh, what is that voice that you do? It's like really old-timey lady, you know? <laughs> I don't know how else it? to say it. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I don't know. I just like, I guess my voice is quite deep, so. Yeah, I think I don't, that's what I don't it know. is. It like, it's probably what it, it is. Like, but. Oh. <laughs> I, I'll try to get you something else. I, I was I was like happy with that one, but then also like it sped up a little bit. <laughs> in my class, we all know cool. that as at the home accordion, voice actors. And, you know. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, me too. I'm I'm boiling right now, but the rest of my house is freezing, so it's actually kind of nice. I had to close the window because the dog was barking. <laughs> oh no. I, I just assumed that John saw that role and developed it just to torment me and and put me, you know, just just to mess with me. Um, And actually, I do my recording in the basement, not in the closet, so. Do I have to be behind the curtain? Okay, I guess I'm the Wizard of Oz. You got tucked in the closet, didn't you? Yeah, yeah.
now it's weird to go back to just doing it by yourself in your closet because now this worked out so great. It really just destroyed my other. I guess we need to keep doing this. Um, so, I think podcasts are my calling. <laughs> this, this is like this is like the best group I've ever gotten. Which not all the groups I've ever been part of are great. Just saying that they've all been super great, but this has been really different. Just this experience, mm. loved it. Yeah. Well, good. I've never actually done this before, so this is it's certainly new, new to me, and I'm trying to get an idea of what it is that I can do to to be, make it better. Uh, to jump back a second on that, though, um, one of the things like we're talking about how how fun it was to record with all of with each other. Uh, I think that's something where, uh, out of a couple of the projects that I've done over the last couple of months, it's always been just me by myself in my closet, like reading uh, off of my iPad. And I think it's just so, it was so wonderful uh, to get to hear people, you know, like in real time, like the 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 real time recording aspect of it was just so much fun because like. Uh, specifically for like the commercial you know like that's something where it's just you could feed off of each other's energy that way and that's something where uh you know really that was so wonderful uh just to get to experience with all of you that like and just sitting here and hearing all of you guys read things i was like oh this is great Cause, like it's just it's people acting again and, oh, yeah. and a lot of this i don't think yeah i don't think we could have done some of this if we just each recorded because so much of it we were kind of reacting to each other or playing off each other and then like we'd stop because someone made a mistake but then in that dialogue before we picked up the script again a lot of times it kind of all grew into our characters a little bit more so i i think the recording live together has a number of benefits um and then john magic it up and added all the sound and music and put it out there for the world um but just that that dynamic of reading through and growing into your character and reacting with each other um it was it was a fun experience <laughs> yeah i did wonder what that was at it first. was really loud i was like what is that and i was, I like, was like oh what? this snack machine she's beating the crap out of it yeah <laughs> she's like karate kicking it putting all her skills into trying to get back <laughs> i'm surprised she didn't shoot it honestly <laughs> she would have missed <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Stationary Object, that'd been funny. I think it's Bernadette. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. But... Have you ever had anxiety just punch you in the gut? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you get that, that text message, we need to talk. Right? Oh. Yeah. Or or the Boston's email, come by my office. <laughs> I have Or you send that uh that like risky text and then you see like the little ellipses mm -hmm. and then they go away. Mm -hmm. And then they pop back up again. And then they go away again and you're just sitting there. Oh no. They're writing you a tome. And then you accidentally go to sleep and you wake up and you're like, I didn't text back. <laughs> No. Oh, I thought I was out of the clear. Yeah. This is... <laughs> no, you're not in the clear. <laughs> I, got, I got something for you. And away we go. Oh. You hear that? <laughs> yeah. Barely. <laughs> away we go. Ahoy. <laughs> and away we go. <laughs> so, I actually have that now as the intro. Oh. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> yeah, the promo makes it sound like he got shot. Well, so I should I sit here and just listen to the whole episode now? <laughs> we'll watch you listen to it. <laughs> It'll be a reaction video. Yeah, just... <laughs> exactly. Reaction to reaction. <laughs> the scum of the uh, entertainment industry is yeah. reaction videos. Um, actually, I had a, I had a question about the Facebook group. Um, yeah. Are you intending that to be like a community of contributors or is that like for fans? Everybody. Okay. So it's like community first, podcast second. <laughs> so, so when I said I hate you to turn it down, he's going to change it to where I'm telling someone else that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see it now. Everybody he said what? Be... 
I was gonna get like inter interjected right when I was like, it's so great to have everybody live and to be able to get live feedback. It'll be someone from tomorrow going, yeah. <laughs> that was a great joke. You're really funny. <laughs> there we go. You just missed that in anywhere. I forgot my question. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, yes. Just the, well, um, it was nice to work with everyone because you're also lovely. Mm -hmm. um, Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you're getting me all mushy. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I'm very really happy with you guys. You guys did a very good job. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, I'm done. Now what? Theater Podcast Reimagination.